Hi, and welcome to the Carnivore Challenge final video. Can you believe we've made it 30 full days? And I'm excited to be doing this video with you. Anything that takes effort and is restrictive is difficult. So you should be proud of your efforts, no matter what the results were, but I've heard some great results. Today, I'd like to go over some of what those results are, and I'd like to give you some tips and tricks for what to do past the 30 days. So let's get started on that. So thank you so much for all the comments. It's been a great journey over this last 30 days, especially with people commenting and letting me know how things went along the ways and the questions that you have. It was all really, really helpful, and it made this challenge that much more fun and feeling more like we had a community. Thank you especially to Carolyn, who was a constant commenter, and she had some very good non-scale and scale victories, despite a small hiccup in her journey as well. So thank you so much for your comments, Carolyn. We also had some long-term carnivores along with us on this journey, and Mama Bear was one of them. She gave us tons of tips along this journey in the comments below. So if you want to see any of her tips, and she had a bunch of them, go to any of my 30-day challenge videos and check out the comments so you can see what Mama Bear had to share. All of my carnivores carnivore videos are available in a carnivore playlist. So go to my channel and look for that playlist. You can see all the prep videos I did before we started for the four or five weeks before we started, and then the 30 day challenge videos, which I did one per week. So check those out if you're new to this, or if you just want to refresh yourself on some of the information. And I'll go through some of that today so that if your interest is piqued, then definitely check out those videos. I also wanted to share that I had some successes along this journey. I've been carnivore for about a year, a year and a half, but I went a little bit ketovore towards the end of the year and a half. So strict carnivore for the last 30 days, and that really got me back to where I needed to be. And the biggest thing for me is food freedom. When you're constantly thinking about food, thinking about your next meal or your next snack, or gosh, do I really have to wait three hours until I eat again? That is really hard on your system. It's hard on your psyche. It's hard to keep you focused on the other things that you want to do. So having that food freedom, having the ability to not worry about food or not think about food, that's my biggest celebration in this last 30 days because that's huge. And those of you out there that are like me and food consumes your thoughts, sometimes my dreams, and, and sometimes binge eating is a result of that when you feel like trying so hard not to eat, not to eat, not to eat, and then all of a sudden your body's just like, eh, or your mind at least is like, we're giving in and we're eating anything we can see. So I think the carnivore way of eating is awesome for people that just are tired of constantly wanting and thinking about food all the time and also binge eaters. It's great if you are a binge eater because you really will find yourself not thinking about your next meal and not feeling that hungry all the time. Now, just be careful if you are a binge eater, don't do the you know one meal a day or some of that because those restrictions still can trigger that binge eating. So just be careful of that. And that's why I typically eat two to three meals a day. So kudos to all of us for sticking this out. And now hopefully, you've realized that 30 days is not enough to really give this way of eating a chance. Really, a lot of the magic happens after the first 30 days, because really the first 30 days is a true transition for your body. The next 60 days is where you're going to see a lot of the additional healing, but that's when you're going to see some of the major changes that a lot of people talk about. And some of us may not have lost yet, because weight loss is really a secondary to the healing that goes on with a carnivore way of eating. So if you've needed healing, if you've had disorders or diseases or conditions that needed to heal, your body would prioritize those. And then the weight loss just happens as kind of a subset of that healing. And so if you haven't lost weight yet, don't fear. I am going to talk about some tips and some things we can do to get that all honed in. So if you're not losing for a reason, then we can hopefully help you with that. But sometimes you just need to give your body a chance to heal the other things going on 
and then you'll start to see that weight loss happen. And carnivore is not always a significant weight loss plan for people. It, again, is really a healing plan. You're going to see a lot of that inflammation leave you. And for me, if you've watched some of the other videos from the prior week, my knee pain is better once I'm on carnivore, strict carnivore. And my hands, I have carpal tunnel in my hands, and that's better. Also, I have a tennis elbow, and my tennis elbow is almost healed. I still feel it occasionally when I use weights at the gym, or if I've been video editing for way too many hours and that happens, I can be a binge editor. <laughs> So I do need to watch those things, but my inflammation has gone down significantly and that really helps joint pain. So first I want to talk about what happens when you aren't losing weight and what you can do about that. As I mentioned, some of the weight loss is inflammation. So you're going to feel better because of the loss of inflammation. But sometimes we have other things in our life aside of food that cause that inflammation. And some of those things can be chronic stress. So if you have a stressful job, or a stressful life in general, then that can cause inflammation in your body. If you work out like a crazy person all the time and doing tons of cardio and really stressing your body out from a workout perspective, that can cause inflammation as well. The other thing is if you aren't prioritizing your sleep, then that can cause inflammation too. And so you're gonna want to make sure that you manage those stresses in your life get that cortisol down because cortisol will increase your blood sugar. And so that's where your body won't be healing and won't be losing the weight because again, that inflammation is going to go up from that increased cortisol and increased sugar in your system. Make sure you're finding ways to help your body with stress and make sure you're prioritizing that sleep. Again, I've mentioned in prior videos that magnesium glycinate, a one a night, and I take 250 milligrams because I take other magnesiums throughout the day, but you can go up to 500 milligrams in the evening if you're not having a lot of magnesium throughout the day. And that really will help you relax and have a more restful night's sleep. So try that out if you can handle magnesium. And again, magnesium glycinate. Uh, the other magnesiums are more energizing. The glycinate is the one that's relaxing and the one that will help you sleep better at night. The other thing that I wanted to mention is if you're not truly carnivore on this plan, and there's no judgment in this statement, but if you're just kind of dabbling in the carnivore world, so you're eating the meats and the fats and things like that, but then you're also eating the carbs from the traditional standard American diet, then you're really not doing yourself any favors on this program because you're basically eating the standard American diet. You're eating the fat, you're eating the protein, and you're eating the carbs. This plan is inherently very low carb. So traditionally, if you're eating your macros in protein and fat, then your carbs are typically gonna be under 25 grams of carbs per day. So that's very considered very low carb. Now you can go up to about 50 in some cases. It just depends on your body. I need very, very low carb to lose any sort of weight. Keep that in mind. Everybody's a little bit different and I've been saying this throughout my videos. I don't believe this. there is a one size fits all when it comes to your way of eating and what works for every person. This process is about learning ourselves to learning what works for us and learning maybe what doesn't work for us. Make sure if you're going to do this lifestyle that you truly cut out the carbs. If you need to do something that's not carnivore, at least make sure that it's protein or a fat and try and stay away from those seed oils. If you're going to do any sort of fat that's non-carnivore, I would say avocados are usually okay for people. But again, you're going to need to try that out and see how it makes your body feel, see how it makes your inflammation feel. Again, stay away from all those simple carbs, those highly processed foods. Definitely stay away from those. Those are not going to do you any good. If you aren't sure, if you're eating truly carnivore, check out my prior videos on how to calculate your macros because that really will help you. And sometimes you just need to recheck yourself. If you're not losing weight for multiple weeks on end, then check those macros and make sure you're not overeating. You can still overeat on the carnivore way of eating. If you just eat tons and tons and tons of meat and fat all the time, then you are not gonna give your body a chance to use the fat we have on our bodies and get rid of some of that. I've also mentioned in the past that sometimes we're gaining muscle because we are prioritizing 
prioritizing our protein so we're not going to lose the muscle that you normally would on most calorie restricted diet and starvation type diets so that's a good thing we want to maintain those muscles especially those of us that are over late 30s and and 40s a lot of people on my channel are in their 50s and 60s like me so make sure that that you are maintaining that protein so that you can maintain your muscles because we don't want to lose those as we age and that's super important the other thing is Sometimes if you've lost a lot of weight, and this might be further down in your journey, but say you get to the six month point and you've lost maybe 50 pounds or even more if you're a little bit heavier, you might lose more in that period of time. But say you've lost a significant amount of weight, then you need to recheck those macros again because your body weight is at a different point. And so your macros will change throughout this journey. So keep checking those macros. You don't have to do it every week, but you wanna just check those macros, check what you're eating on a daily basis for a little while, and make sure everything looks like it should, because we wanna make sure that we're setting ourselves up for success. All right, also, check that activity level. So as we've mentioned in prior videos, especially last week, you wanna make sure that you're being more active that helps you burn your fat as well because your body is going to be using fuel to maintain that activity level so try and stand more than you sit get a standing desk i have a standing desk that i love i make sure that i don't sit in the day i sit a little bit on the weekends it's kind of like my weekend thing as i get to sit a little bit more but during the week i try and stand as much as i can throughout the day so it's a little challenge i give myself like how much can i can i stand throughout the day how many activities could i do that require me to stand also get those walks in it's been super helpful for me to take that 10 or 15 minute walk after dinner or do a quick walking exercise inside which i've had to do because we've had a bunch of rainy days and i don't like to walk in the rain when i was a kid i think i liked that but as an adult i don't appreciate always walking in the rain do those workouts online whatever you can find or just move around walk up and down the stairs for you know 10 minutes after your meals it really really helps the other thing as i mentioned last week i challenged you to try and start lifting weights and doing weight bearing exercises so it, you don't necessarily have to be lifting weights but doing push-ups use your own body weight for some of those exercises or you know lift some water bottles and just do some arm exercises and squats and things like that so that you're increasing that muscle mass in your body because as i explained last week while a pound of fat and a pound of muscle weigh the same, they take up much different space in your body. So the more muscle you have that has replaced that fat in your body, the more you'll look smaller and your clothes will feel better even though the scale might not be changing because they both weigh the same. But definitely the muscles in your body take up less space than the fat in your body. So let's prioritize working out and getting just more movement in our day. The next one's a little bit harder for me to talk about, but I just wanted to at least get it out there so that you're thinking about it. If you've had a stall for a very long time, you may be experiencing some sort of hormonal imbalance. And it could be an inactive thyroid that's causing you problems it could be an estrogen imbalance or a testosterone imbalance so if you think that might be your situation go see your doctor get some testing done and make sure that those things look okay so that's not something fighting against your weight loss journey and then my last suggestion for you as you continue on in this carnivore way of eating is try not to incorporate non-carnivore foods into your diet until you've met your goal your body weight goal and the reason for that is those other foods can sometimes really kick you out for a period of time while your body's like oh she's back to eating the standard american diet or whatever the case is now again if you're trying to do something simple like adding one food in a week that you haven't had before like an avocado as an example i think you can get away with some of those kinds of things but again, you're not really going to want to add fruit or a lot of vegetables or things like that. And if you do those kinds of things, once you're in maintenance phase, then make sure you're just incorporating them in one at a time to see how they make you feel, see how the inflammation reacts in your body. Do some research about vegetables that have less of the plant poisons in them, less of the anti-nutrients in them, so that you know which ones you should start with 
and then you can reincorporate that in if that's something that you desire to do. Now there's people that have been carnivore for five, 10, 20 years, and they don't have any desire to add any of that stuff back in, and that's fine. But if you're looking for some of those things, I would wait at least until I've hit my weight loss goal. And one thing I just want to mention is keep learning throughout this process. The beauty of this is you have so much information at your fingertips. Do research online, find some doctors that talk about carnivore, and don't just stick to one because there are a lot of different ways to do the carnivore way of eating, and there's a lot of different opinions about it. But start to listen to people, try things out yourself, and learn what works for you. Everybody's an individual, and I've said this throughout this program, I don't think there's a one size fits all for this. And I think you need to learn what works well for your body. Do you need more fat? Do you need more protein? Do you need maybe a few more carbs or a few less carbs? Do you need more activity or less activity? So those are the things that I think this is a great time to be researching some of that. While this will be my final video on the carnivore challenge, please know that I am gonna continue this way of eating. So send me a comment if you are too, and hopefully you can look at some of the other content, my regular content on this channel, this gentastic journey through my semi-retirement. I focused on things that bring joy to life. And two of those things for me are, uh, first, my fur babies, my dogs, and I have a cat as well. I have five dogs and one cat. And so a lot of my content is how we can help them live their happiest, healthiest lives. So I've got dog recipes, and my dogs are primarily carnivore with a little bit of veg. I also talk about all the things we can do to care for them in a better way. So watch those videos if that interests you. I also have a creative outlet that I think is important for bringing joy into life, and that's card crafting. That's making homemade greeting type cards. So if that's something that might interest you, please watch my card how-to videos. I'd love to see you in any of those videos. I also have some Friday faves, which are things that I find that I think I wanna share with my community. Things that bring me joy, things that make life easier. So watch for my Friday faves as well. I may include a carnivore recipe here and there because that does bring me joy when I can find a new recipe that I enjoy on this carnivore way of eating. But otherwise, you probably won't see any more carnivore videos unless I get an outpouring where people don't want me to stop. But this was really more so that I could introduce you to this, get you excited, get you feeling better, and then send you on your way to continue on this journey without me. It's been a blast. I so enjoyed this community. I appreciated all the comments and the questions and just loved having you with. I hope you got to enjoy some of the recipes that I've had over the last four weeks and that this is gonna be an exciting journey for you. Stay in touch with me, watch my other content, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks so much for joining today.